more or less the final iteration on this. Uh, I went with some modifications. One, I added these wooden panels to add a little more strength and rigidity to the top. Uh, part of it was my original design. I, I didn't really call for a full perimeter around here. Part of it is that when this thing's all closed down, I, I still kind of wanted to be able to reach into it. In retrospect, when I build these in the future, they're, they're just going to have a full perimeter around the rim. I, I'm, I'm going to do that on, on these in the future. And I'm going to do it with wood on top of the metal. I, I think we're going to do that. Um, but part of this was I wanted to kind of be something you could take apart and just make this a flatbed trailer and make it into other stuff. Uh, what I did was I got rid of this T-bar kickstand mechanism and the little outriggers that had originally been adjustable so I could do different sizes of panel array. Let's say if I change that out and I get panels that are in a slightly different size. What I'm going to is this carabiner and, and ring mechanism so that there's some give to it, okay? If the wind hits this or it moves around a little bit, you know, no single part is bearing all the weight. So if there's a, a failure on one of these things or twists and pops, you no know, single part's going to cause this whole thing to fail. When it's down in the stowed position, what I do is, um, I you know, I put the carabiners through these and through these. Now, when you're putting carabiners in something like this, it's kind of hard to line up both rings unless... They, they line up with here perfectly, and that's what I've done here. And of course, we'll be painting that. But this tailgate isn't meant to hold a lot of weight. So, you know, it would be possible for those hinges to break off, not at the welded point, but let's say right above the welded point. But by having the ones that are on here spin, and that's a lock nut, see? By, by having that be able to spin, it gives me a little give, a little push, and... Uh, you know it allows a little give it a little push so with this type of a thing it's it's basically becomes a short chain on this and i could retrofit to a larger chain later on when this is in a down position i i take the same carabiners um off of here and just it, it locks all the way around so you know, it might shift a little bit as it goes down the road, but it's not going to come off. I mean, these things are these things are rated for several hundred pounds of pressure on each one, and then these eye bolts go all the way through this wood, and this is this is you know pretty solid pressure treated lumber. Uh, so that's how that's going to go. The auxiliary batteries are of course hooked up with this larger di a larger cable connector. You know, big bad solid stuff. Pretty, pretty weather resistant. If water gets into that, it just, it's just not that big of a deal. Um, it's all, all made to be like farm and industrial stuff. So this is the auxiliary battery bank. I mean, this is where most of our power comes and goes on this thing. And you'll notice that crossovers don't quite go all across here. It's an optical illusion because of the way these snake. It actually goes in a circle or I mean a semicircle that's completed at these cables so these two batteries the, these two batteries don't connect to each other without everything going through here um, so in reconnecting everything you gotta look out you know not to short it that's that's where a little bit of welding happened over here um, right now I, I have the panel system charging the battery bank now I thought these would have come fully charged and there's a lot of amperage coming through here uh, but we don't have the solid green light on it yet which means it's still charging the stuff up it's still bringing it up the voltage I, I'll come out here a little bit later with a voltmeter I repositioned this so that it would be easier to get cords in and out of it the other thing is I'm, I'm leaving it on continuously as a test I want to test this before leaving the city um, on a more or less constant load so that I, I can do that right now it's on but there's no constant load so I'm a little curious how that's going to deal with our voltage situation of course I have the grid tie inverter standing by where once this is all topped off I uh, yeah I can unplug the system and then go grid tie 
thing is, you really don't want to do that in daylight hours um, because it can send a little shortwave back through the panels, supposedly, and and pop a little transistor in here or diode or something. I, you know, that's what they say in the instructions. A lot of other people tell me it's not going to matter. Uh, so the heavier the box is, is positioned toward the center of the trailer, more or less, the lighter the two boxes, but it's still a fair amount of weight, is positioned forward. What I'll probably also do for transport is lay some sort of a 2x4 with little spacer blocks in it across both of these just to keep them kind of tied together from shifting around on the load. And of course, you know, I can carry other stuff in this empty space. We just got to make sure we're not going to be getting crazy about overloading this. Um, one of the things, though, is I, I got to build a composting toilet for the cabin, and I wouldn't carry it on here as a regular basis, but I'll probably, you know, carry a little extra materials in this little space when I transport it. When it's up there more or less full time, you got to figure, well, if somebody's transporting power around, they also need to, you know, they're probably doing that to move some tools or a little bit of firewood or something like that. So that would be some of the other stuff that goes into this empty space with um, you know, one end being used more than the other. But the way I redesigned this, either end of the panel array can be lifted up, okay? So e either end can be lifted up, and these are on wheels, so they can be moved around. If somebody wants both of these shoved further up that end, which would kind of balance the trailer a little bit too heavy on the front, well, they could do that. Let's say if it remains hooked up to something. You could do that. You can move it around. You could flip this so that the, the, the lids open on the other side. If you, if you want to do that, you can. Um, you know, for example, if the other end of the thing is being lifted that way. The other thing this configuration allows me to do is I can secure the front on these and I could lift it up at the rear and put these little lifter blocks. These are, these are basically holding it the tension. Um, I could put these at the rear and have it at that angle, you know, about a, I don't know, 30 degree angle or something. If I were to put them up here, that's, that's going to be pushing this thing pretty close to straight up and down. I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be a really, because these things would actually be over to here. So I would be not probably mounting them here. I, I would only be mounting these bars back back here. Lifting and lowering this, I can do it because I'm a strong guy, but normally it's a two-person operation. And, uh, you know, that's just, that's just the way it is. But... You know, low speed off road, not going on the highway. Uh, this thing has enough little give and shake to it that, uh, and a little more even weight distribution, the way this kind of pushes down and out this way. You know, you could drive it around like this, you know, low speed, you know, around the farm, around the ranch, or survival retreat. That's not really a problem. If I were to do this over again, let's say really permanently mounted to the trailer, I'm gonna do it differently. But for now, I, I kind of like this whole eyelet and chain uh, type arrangement with these boards because I can do other types of mounting systems for this panel array that's based on, let's say, suspending it from chains or, or having a post and chain type of thing uh, where let's say there's four by four posts in the ground and we suspend it you know by those four by four posts and then we can adjust the length of the chain to adjust the angle uh, that's just one way of doing it okay there could be a couple other ways of doing it but uh, I, I kind of wanted to play around with that whole idea of a style of using this 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 type of wood and then being able to suspend it suspend it from chains off of a deck or something and i think that you know and then on the trailer of course obviously so right now i'm just kind of load longevity testing the uh the system charging up the battery bank which i i think is a pretty good upper middle of the road battery bank i mean this is a, a little bit larger 
solar generator system, but it's also kind of modular. You know, I could unplug things and move it around or remount it on a shed or something like that with uh, chain chain holding these eyelets with, uh, you know, with big carabiners. I think that's, that's a good way to do it. And so it's more or less the final iteration on this project. If you have any questions or comments, uh, try to stick them into this video. I've, I've made a few other videos of this thing throughout the progress of it. I, I might make a few others as I test or do some minor tweaks. Let's say, uh, you know, an external monitoring uh, setup for the charge controller or something like that. But this is pretty much the system, and, and I'm making it so it can come off the trailer and get mounted elsewhere. Let's say on posts in the ground or something like that, or be mobile, you know. And uh, total cost of the build, I think, is kind of high, um, you know, especially compared to a gasoline power generator. It's just that the way I've engineered this is there, there should be little or no ongoing cost. And then with the grid tie inverter, if it's stored in a place on grid, it you know it'll help reduce that electric bill a little bit. Uh, so there it is, the solar generator trailer, all done.